Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's 100% Metroid Fusion. In the last part we re-accessed the main deck to find some bio signs and they didn't exactly turn out as we'd hoped. And now we're heading back into the sectors because we need to get some, some uh, power bomb data from Sector 5. I was actually a bit disappointed when I first played this section, not gonna lie, because I really wanted to explore more of the main deck, but then I looked at the map and realized I'd already explored most of the main deck, so... Looking back, it actually makes sense on why we have to go back into another sector to get some stuff. Really though, <laughs> we've been here before, you know where to go. We still have to listen to Adam though, because why not? You've been to this data room before, but I'll show you its position again. Is your objective clear? Yeah. Now move out. It is a straight shot over to it. But you know, at least this time, I'll give the game this. There's no bullshit in our way to get there, but eh, it still kind of rubs me the wrong way. Also, yet again, potentially you could wait until later to get this missile tank here, which you need to jump through right here to get to. But I'm getting it now because why not? Because we will be eventually returning to this room uh, for another reason that we can't quite access yet. Either way, it really is just a straight shot to get to the data room. You know what? Well, okay, you're still there, apparently. Yet again, when I first played this, uh, the fact that this thing was still here kind of scared me. Because you have to wonder what that even is and what it's doing back there. Is it just going having fun like, wee? Either way, it's a straight shot. Just head to the right now and you're there. Let's get ourselves some power bombs. Power bombs, similarly to Super Metroid, are a separate item from normal bombs. However, this time around, you don't have to select them. Basically, you use them like a missile in your morph bomb mode. And um, honestly, I prefer this method. Because <laughs> uh, it requires less button presses. And now that we've done that, we can actually access some new areas. However, we can't get back up from here, so we need to immediately use our power bomb to blow something up right there. I can recommend saving, by the way. In fact, I very much do. Just in case you're more reckless. This is a nice eerie roll. Oh, no. Hi, SAX. Now, the developers did a clever trick here. You obviously think you have to bomb your way out here somehow, so you'll probably place a uh, normal bomb in the lower left corner, right? Doing so finds a power bomb block. Which is a trick. That leads to a uh, little pathway that does not go all the way through, and using the power bomb will destroy that little pillar that's to the right of us, making you easy access for the SAX. It is technically faster to still use a power bomb to blow up those three blocks I just did to get out of there, but I've decided to play safe over speed. And yeah, that's actually about all that room is. It's a trick room. I, we all fall for it for at least once, but it still hurts. Also, there's a nice little red X there if you get damaged. That's pretty nice of them. Now, we could head left, or we could immediately head up, because there is actually, as soon as I can get over here, another ladder for us. Yet again, this is just another missile tank. You don't need to do this unless you're going for 100%. However, it's also one of the only other times we're going to be over in this direction, so you might as well do it now. Oh, power bomb tank, sorry. Oh yeah, that's right. Now that we have power bombs, power bomb tanks are now going to be fairly often, uh, fairly frequently found items. Uh, there are 32 of them in the game. Uh, each of them, I think, giving you two extra ones. You get way too many power bombs in this game. I'll be frank. I'll be frank with you. Uh, I mean, technically speaking, I suppose if you get enough of them, you technically never need to use a recharge station. But I use recharge stations when I need to anyway. So I guess it's just a playstyle thing. But with that, we now technically have seen every kind of collectible the game has to offer for us. But now that we have the power bombs and we finished that thing with the SAX, we're done here in Sector 5 for now. We'll be coming here again later on for one more thing, uh, at least in terms of storyline. So let's head on back to Adam. Also, you might remember this giant wall thing. We saw one of those earlier in the main deck before we went to the habitation deck. Those can only be destroyed by power bombs. And go figure, there's another one right here, and we want to go over there for another power bomb expansion. Also, the power bomb is really loud. <laughs> uh, it quite frequently, honestly, glitches the sound out a little bit on my Game Boy Advanced. This is one of the more annoying expansions in the game to get. Basically, those little rooms where the Ripper are, aside from the first block, it is all crumble blocks. You need to be able to frequently place it well enough so that you can jump onto it and then off of it to get 
into that little hole. I got it done pretty quickly here, but I've been here for about 10 minutes in some playthroughs. Oh god, watch out for that little trap too. This game loves its crumble blocks, more so than Super Metroid even, I'd say. At least in terms of going for collectibles. Though actually, on a funny note of saying blocks reminded me of this. Fun little fact about this game, it shares the engine with Wario Land 4, of all things. And you can tell this because in some of the debug test rooms, there's blocks from that game. Uh, namely, the like little blocks you have to destroy as Wario in any of the levels. Ah, you're still there. You're no longer frightening me. Which goes into some very interesting stuff behind this game's development, uh, in my eyes, because it's interesting when a game shares an engine to me. Like, uh, how DuckTales, uh, one on the NES shared Mega Man 1's engine. And yet they're drastically different play styles. That just, in uh, I've always found that part of the game design very interesting. Or God knows how many games share Unreal. Either way, let's get off that tangent and go talk to Adam. Hello, sir. What you got for me now? Samus, return to your ship. I have important information. Going back there for the first time in a while. Hey, you didn't even ask me if I understood my objective. What's wrong with you, Adam? Well, let's get the hell over there. We know where our ship is by now. I would hope we, have, we, all were, we were only there once, but it was a pretty impactful five minutes, if you ask me. Also, yeah, quite frequently in the main deck, you'll find yourself accidentally activating your speed booster because they gave you more than enough room to do it in. Alright, up the elevator. Uh... This isn't normal. Uh... Hello? Well, at least there's a convenient passageway here. I'm assuming this is some sort of air duct, but... Otherwise, there would be no reason for that to exist. Creepy music. And enemies that I think you can't kill unless you spam ice missiles at them. Weird. Ah. Uh... Uh Ridley, why are you here? I've killed you in Super Metroid for the second time. Oh, no. Well, that doesn't bode well. Use a power bomb immediately, by the way, because we are right next to another expansion. I think they actually were smart in this game's design in that I think every single power bomb tank requires the power bombs to get to. I think. Well, power bombs and later items, obviously. Which is cool, but at the same time, that doesn't leave sequence breaking open. However, at the same time, Fusion is a game I don't think you can really sequence break in. Uh, due to its setup. Zero Mission you can. Super you can. But that's because those are more open and form games. Ow. I don't know why I did that. I could have just laid a power bomb on the other side and that would have been fine. Either way, this vent system is actually a pretty nifty shortcut because we're already at the docking bays. So that was pretty good for them. Uh, actually, that was more convenient than going the long way. Either way, let's get back to our ship and see what the hell Adam has for us. If he wants us back here, it has to be something important. Oh, hey, your, uh, your ship is also a recharge room and a save room in one. That's pretty cool. The main style of the reactor core has gone offline. That's why all elevators and station systems are down. Elevators and hatches won't work. This doesn't bode well. If you can get to this point, you may be able to start the auxiliary power system. Then we can figure out why the main silo went offline. Is your objective clear? Yeah. By the way, I asked you to return to tell you. Some strange creatures have boarded your ship. I confirmed that they were not ex-hosts and gave them a berth. Do you know anything about these strange creatures? Were they the source of the healthy biocides earlier? Very well then. The presence in the midst of this incident must have some significance. I'll keep them here. Well, it's good to see the Atticoons and the Chores made it to our ship fairly safely. Though you have to wonder why the X don't try to get into our ship. In fact, I never thought about that before. Why don't they try to get in there? That's weird. Uh, bugs from where? Those look like the things that were in the cocoons earlier back in Sector 2. Thankfully, there's a little power bomb thing here. And that brings us to the reactor silo. Uh, that red hatch that was above me actually leads into this area, but we can't use it for quite a long time, obviously. 
And welcome to the general react- a uh, central reactor core. That's not how you read central. <laughs> and there's a lot of vegetation here. That doesn't seem normal. Well, let's just head into this room, because this is the only one you can really go into. There's a save room down below, but you can't use it yet. Oh boy, space pirates. Uh, these guys were in sector one, but I didn't really make a comment on them, which is kind of surprising considering they're space pirates. Which brings the question, why did the BSL station have space pirates that they were researching on it? That's kind of suspicious. Either way, I'm actually not a fan of this room. It's actually just a giant little bomb maze you have to look, work your way through. Uh, power bombs help a lot, but it's still pretty long and pointless. Oh yeah, we got an energy tank a bit back. Uh, it's completely in your way, there's no way you can miss it. Well, there's a missile tank for us, but I need to get down there somehow. Well, okay, uh, that wasn't nice. I've just never been a fan of this room, honestly. It's way too long. <laughs> also, if I sound a bit stuffy, I'm a, I apologize for that. It, uh, today in particular, I, I'm a bit stuffy in my nose for some reason. Well, we saw a Ghidorah X there, which means that we're coming up on a boss fight. Uh, I have no idea who we could be facing, but uh, boss fight means new ability. Out of my way, fool! Uh, hello? Anything? The moment that explosion happens, aim straight up and fire missiles, because you get some bonus damage in on our next boss. Yakuza, which is a weird spider thing. This boss is actually surprisingly tricky. Uh, because whenever it's moving around like this, when it's not trying to do its attack, there's a chance it'll grab you when it touches you, and it'll drag you up, which you can struggle to escape from, but if you if it completes its attack, that can do like three, two or three energy tanks, I believe. Either way, the way, the way we need to damage this thing is that every now and then when it does its actual attack, which is firing those fireballs from earlier, you need to aim up and fire into its mouth. Uh, I'm a bit more reckless with this fight because I stand right below where the fire's gonna be and will tank that damage more often than not. But it's the safer strategy for me in that it takes a bit long, uh, makes the fight go by a bit quicker. Also, I love the boss theme here. Uh, it's the Ceres boss theme from earlier, but we can hear it a lot more clearly here. And it, phase two begins after a bit, which foreshadows the ability we'll actually be getting from Yakuza. In which case, it's just jumping around constantly. However, it's also constantly open for attack when it's not jumping. So honestly, once you reach phase two, this is a pretty easy fight. Plus, if I recall, the little worms it drops don't do nearly enough damage to really be worrisome. And once we're done with that, like, I think it will be in two shots? Maybe three? As soon as I can touch it? Okay, I was completely off on the number. Uh, it'll enter its core X phase, which, as usual, you know what to do here. I would hope so by now. Yakuza was actually a boss I had a lot of trouble with in my early playthroughs because I was horrible at timing missiles and getting touched by him. But nowadays, not too bad. Seriously though, I love this song. This is the this is like the catchiest boss theme the game has. And for beating it, we get Space Jump! Uh, which, like in Super Metroid, allows us to somersault continually in midair. Uh, if you remember that missile tank I got in Sector 1 that I need the wall jump for, you could potentially have waited to get this to make that a bit easier on you if you're not good at doing the wall jump, because uh, this is just timing based. And here's the auxiliary power station. So now, auxiliary power is online. Let's see if we can find a navigation room to talk to Adam in because of that. Hey, that was easy. Save rooms and recharge rooms are now back in line. But with only auxiliary power, no elevators or hatches will work. Without the main silo one line, we're still stuck. I believe the source of this problem is the vegetation you saw earlier choking the main the reactor core components. Is your objective clear? Yeah. We'll have to find the source of those roots to proceed. Well, thankfully and conveniently, the source of the roots is in the very next room. Uh, because if you look around, you'll actually find a little morph ball thing. Also, now the bugs are in here. Yeah, those are the exact cocoons from Sector 2, which means that there's got to be a way into Sector 2 in here. Oh, hey, look, there it is. This was my least favorite part of the game when I was growing up, though, because I was scared shitless of what's upcoming. Oh, no, the SAX. This is the only opportunity you are forced to encounter it. So let's just go balls deep. Thankfully, ice missiles can freeze the SX for a decent chunk, but I don't recommend getting hit by it because it's, uh, ice beam still does a decent chunk of damage. Let's take a look at that when I get hit next. I'm at 10 energy tanks, 49 damage, and I get hit here for a fact I know. Yeah, that was about 220 damage. Just run the hell away from it. 
Uh, potentially, you actually could have manipulated its AI, though, because when it's chasing you, the SAX's AI is actually rather stupid. Uh, I took the long way around there, but what you could potentially have done is... Uh, there's two missile blocks here that uh, is our way down. You could have done these missile blocks while he was chasing you, and once you're in the pit, it won't be able to come down there to chase you. It'll be cha it'll just be constantly jumping over the pit to try and get you with the screw attack. So you can manipulate the AI there if you're good enough. I have only done that once because uh, I am much more of a safe player than that. Either way, as Adam stated, hatches aren't usable to us at the moment, so we need to find doors that are completely open to us to begin with. Which, thankfully, there's a completely linear path for us to do so. Also, if I believe if you wanted to use that save room that's below me, you would need to use the power bomb in this room right in here. Because uh, then the top of those two blocks would be destroyed. Oh, hey, this room looks high-tech. Well, let's get the hell up here. Oh, hey, look, that looks uh, suspicious. Let's use a power bomb. And that opens the way to another power bomb tank for us. Uh, I believe once I get the power online, there's technically another opportunity for me to get that other item I missed in here earlier. But yet again, I didn't even know I was missing that until towards the end of the game, so... Uh, that one, I think it's a missile tank, is still off my limits, sadly. Or off my radar. Oh, that looks suspicious. Uh, I guess we're going in the right direction because the vegetation's getting thicker. There's nothing up here for you yet. I don't even know why I'm going up here. I think I'm confusing this with a later area. And this is me going... Oh, right. <laughs> You can tell I wasn't completely in the right mindset for this area of the game because uh, this is probably one of the shortest uh, times that you can't use uh, hatches, but eh, it's a bit embarrassing, but oh well. Also, watch out for those bees because they do decent damage. Uh, charged up wide beam is more than enough to kill them, especially with the slash, but uh, yeah, that, that kicked my ass. Those bugs will always be annoying, but thankfully there's a red X right there. Yeah, about 500 takes recovered. And it's time for the next boss fight, the Natori, which is oddly Chozo statue shaped. Basic strategy, fire missiles at it. Similarly to the spore spawn from Super Metroid and that one bug from uh, Zero Mission, this thing's challenge is more so the room it's in, because the spores have more than enough knockback to send you into those little Venus flytrap things down there, in which case you'll take a lot of damage. Eventually you will destroy the uh, statue a little bit, which will get rid of the top things, and then it'll just, just start firing uh, beams at you, which hurt a lot. Just continue firing missiles at it, ducking when it's a high one, jumping when it's a low one. At which point, it becomes a Beam Core X. You know the strategy for Beam Core Xs by now. Fire them until their eyes went open. This is the only Beam Core X though in the game you can't do that little platform abuse with because there's no platforms you can stand on, if I recall at least. I don't think there's anything above me right now. And there it goes. And for beating this, we get... The plasma beam that Adam was talking about earlier. Now our beam can pierce through enemies, which means we now have a decent weapon against the SAX. But with that, and power being restored due to us destroying that, which means it was the source of the vegetation, I'm gonna need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in part 8, we'll be heading back towards the navigation room now that we've solved that little incident. See you guys then!